They have been repeatedly used in comics, TV shows, and movies. Does that mean they are overused? Welcome to my channel, KC, that's me, Carrie Chug, the Sledge Storyteller, here to talk about the wonderful world of storytelling and to open up discussion about how we can tell the best stories we possibly can. So, certain storytelling tropes are so commonly used that they are now thought of as cliché. But I dare say that we don't think cliché or think that cliché is a bad thing if they're implemented in an entertaining fashion. So I'm going to talk about the five specific clichés that I love when done right. Number one, sidekicks. Now, if you read a lot of Golden Age comics, you'll find out that realism wasn't a big priority, in large part due to the primary audience, kids. And so it became no stretch for a superhero reality to allow for the hero to pick up a juvenile partner in the fight against crime. And the publishers never denied the reason for implementing it, giving kids a fantasy of being that hero's sidekick. After Robin was added to the Batman comics, sales doubled. Hence, the floodgates open for every other hero to pick up a kid sidekick. And it stands to reason that the inclusion of sidekicks to heroes who have remained in publication are still around purely because of nostalgia. Given the real-world danger of a hero doing that and the greater demand of realism in the stories. And adult sidekicks are nothing new. Iron Man and War Machine, Captain America and Falcon, and Batman sometimes with the grown-up first Robin, now Nightwing. Such team-ups work in the buddy cop mentality with interactions that open up many opportunities for good dialogue. But nowadays, any sidekick without the pop cultural momentum of Robin, unless they're in a superhero spoof or a mystical being, should be no younger than 18 years old. Number two, dead family or loved ones, usually parents. So technically, Superman was the first superhero to lose his parents, specifically both his Kryptonian and Earth parents early in life, then it was established that Bruce Wayne's parents were murdered by a random mugger. Robin's parents were murdered. Peter Parker's Uncle Ben was murdered. Iron Man's parents were murdered. The Punisher's whole family was murdered. Now, loss of a loved one as a key motivator has proven to be a powerful plot device. But the list of superheroes who have had that experience keeps going beyond the list I've just mentioned. Granted, I love being proven wrong in any type of thing when it comes to storytelling, any doubts that I might have. But this has pretty much been done to death. There are many superheroes who don't have this kind of key event in their history. Captain America, Wonder Woman, Thor, Ms. Marvel. Sledge. I did say at the start of this video that I'm talking about doing these cliches right. In this case, it's all about how we effectively depict those key events for those heroes who already have that in their history. A lot of Batman movie fans have complained of having to go through a full sequence of Bruce Wayne walking down crime alley with his parents only to run into the mugger who opens fire. That done repeatedly. I'll say this. If that event warrants inclusion in the movie, the last of the collection of animated shorts called Gotham Knight, all you needed was three seconds. It's simple, it's impactful, and everyone knows exactly what's happening. Now, it can't be one size fits all. But the more well-known the event is by the public, the simpler it can be. And if it's a new character, find another angle for them to struggle with. Number three, hero-villain connection. Bit ironic that a trope that's meant to create irony has been done enough that irony has become that much harder to create in it. Both Captain America and the Red Skull being products of the Super Soldier Serum, Green Goblin is Spider-Man's best friend's dad, Professor X and Magneto are old friends whose conflicting ideologies cause their respective factions to war with each other. These are all examples of classic iterations of this trope. I'll go so far as to say it's irresistible to any writer to implement it to raise the stakes and bring high emotions. All that to the story. Yes, I'm guilty of it. Watch for Roger Flint in my sludge stories. But powerful, yes, but the more repeatedly it's depicted, the more faded the appeal because it becomes routine and redundant. Think about other classic angles like Superman's benevolent arrival in Metropolis bringing out the worst in Lex Luthor's narcissism after going so long as its benefactor. Then there's the Joker who sees the order Batman seeks to create in Gotham City and makes it his lot in life to disrupt that order at every turn. I think every hero should have villains they have ties to, but variety is key here. Number 4. Losing Powers It crosses every comic creator's mind how do you convince your audience that your hero is still a hero without the powers? 
the obvious answer is, take them away at some point. What bothers me is the formularic scenario when the hero has some artificial compensation for the loss of powers, only to have that give out at the most vital moment at the climactic scene. I do believe every superhero should get a fish out of water story sometime to prove that they have heart. Maybe make it about a contingency plan they have to figure out or add an element of getting help when needed and show how smart they are in figuring out how to prevail against the coming threat that's just as powerful as it is when the hero does have powers. Remember, it's about the challenge and it has to be convincing and not a case of been there, done that. Number four, the damsel in distress. Lois Lane seems to be the poster child for this trope. It's a bad trope when the damsel shows no fight in the process of abduction and the damsel hinges all hope on getting rescued by the hero and expresses that very thing to the villain captor. Show some fight in the damsel before they're subdued and don't restrict that trope to the hero's love interest. Number five, the suiting up scene. One good indicator of this being cliche is how often it is spoofed. But in the movies, Highly respected directors have included it, and the reason is simple. It carries that air of the hero getting down to business, and when shown in finesse, gives the idea of the hero knowing what they're doing. Along the many issues taken with the movie Batman and Robin, the suiting up scene dragged. Another bad example, the well-known among Batman fans fan film, Batman Dead End. As much of a guilty pleasure as it is for me, Batman's doing it in a fashion that makes it look like a ritual, Hence, the key caveat to this trope, keep it simple. Well, that's my insight on superhero cliches. Agree, disagree, or something I left out? Please let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, please click like. If you like this channel, please click subscribe or follow me on Instagram. As always, the link to order Sledge number one is below the description there, or you can order it on Kindle. I always say it, let's all look for civility amid all struggles we're having, any strifes, any disagreements. Let's all try to settle things in a civil matter. And amid this pandemic, let's all do as we're supposed to do. Let's keep wearing our masks even if we've got the vaccinations. When you get the opportunity to get the vaccine, please get it. Thanks for watching. Everyone be safe and God bless.